Hey everyone, I'm Mia Smith and I did the topic Only Good People Get Depressed from the psychology book. And um, it started off saying that if people stop blaming themselves for the things that happened in their life, the rate of depression would decrease dramatically. And she said this because she believed we live in a just world, which means if something good happens, we expect good to come. And if something bad happens, we expect bad to come. An example of this would be if I held the door open for a girl and later that day I tripped into my water, I would take the tripping into the water super personally because I did something good that day and I expected only good to come from that. So she later says that if we stopped personalizing these type of events and internalized them instead that she thinks that we can recover from these type of events and the depression rate can drop and decrease um, a lot and this led me to want to further look into depression and I started this topic because I believed um a lot of those around us struggle with this and I've struggled with this before so um I thought it'd be really good to look into more because I didn't quite just agree with what she said and how she viewed it. And a quote she ended with on the actual sheet itself said, to turn natural sadness into depression, all you have to do is blame yourself for the disaster that has befallen you, which I personally do not agree with. So I wanted to look into maybe a different view of this. So I went to, um, search up a website and um the um site i found was my critical responses to stress induced depression and these are the causes and consequences from that so it started off by saying that um chronic stress is a major risk factor for um, various psychiatric diseases including depression and it had many more listed, but this was the only one that I felt to cover over. And most of the evidence suggested that the microbial cells orchestrated stress-induced depression, which gave me um, something better than just saying that because of the events of my day. It says more like, this is actually what's going on with you. Um, so, the introduction got in depth with the description of the major depression, sorry, major depressive disorder, and it's um, shortened by MDD. And it used quotes from parts of the brain, which one quote it had was the prefrontal cortex. And it reminded me earlier how we learned about the prefrontal lobe or the frontal lobe. And um, so I looked into that a little and it is part of the frontal lobe, it's like right there. And um, I thought that was cool because that's something we learned about and I thought it was really cool how I could correlate it in. So then um, it helped me to greater understand the, the subject and the topic I was going over because of something I had just learned in class. And I remembered how um, damage to the frontal lobe could um, really impair your thinking and everything memory wise. So if that could happen, then if um, the microbial cells could also maybe affect it in a way. And um, so the article quotes how chronic stress is a major risk factor, continuing with examples from scientific research and included different cells and their effects on you and what causes depression. So the that was the first section. And the second section goes into detail about the microbial um, just the basis of it and its role in depression stating microglia are brain resistant immune cells that was straight out of the um, article and then it got further into detail about that and all about that if you wanted to go read it I will post it below um, the third section explained the triggers um, of the microglial inflammatory activation in stress induced depression which I would not get into um, over this because I'm not sure if I could trigger anyone else, so I'm not going to get into that. But the fourth section was how microglial inflammatory signaling in the pathology of stress-induced depression. And it explained everything that went on in different amounts of interesting things such as neurons and cells, which wasn't super interesting to me, but it may be to you, I don't know. Um, and it just kind of went over like very much scientific everything 
it had everything laid out and showed you like this type of cell is affecting this, which causes different things. You know what I'm saying? So um, the fifth section explained how we could use this information for treatment, which was um, super cool to see how they had actually given a reasoning for it um, different from Dorothy Rowe. And um, I thought it was super cool to see how just from the research they had scientifically, they could try and um, help find a cure, or find something to help. So um, lastly, the sixth section was um, a conclusion paragraph and it just summarized mostly everything throughout the um, article. And it was a super long article to read, but it summarized almost all of it in a few sentences. And it kind of just um, restated the claim and then included future perspectives on the research itself. So like how they can go into this in the future, future, um, future, fixes and treatments, treatment plans. Um, I think that reading the article and being able to go over it brought a little peace to my mind because um, this was just Dorothy Rowe's opinion. And I think seeing that and feeling as if natural sadness turned into a depression isn't quite what I would call it because Many people don't feel that way and many people could more relate to um, saying that all this scientific evidence is being provided and saying like there's actual ways to cure this instead of saying that um, if we just think a little bit differently then I won't feel as depressed because um, I don't think any time that I've had a bad day I was a bad person and I didn't take that personally, but I think that mentally we can still struggle. And so that was my, that was my approach on this and I hope you enjoyed the video.